epithelomic fluid which circulates inside the cockroach is hemolymph, just a plasma colored liquid. So it is hemolymph. Try to note down every point which I am emphasizing on while I am delivering this lecture to you people. The circulatory system of cockroach. See again many of the questions can arise from this part of physiology of the cockroach which is circulatory system. The exactness is the key over here as well. First of all, the blood of the cockroach does not serve for the purpose of respiration. Although the hemocytes are present, but they are amoeboid in shape and they do not carry any pigment. And hence, the name of the silomic fluid which circulates inside the cockroach is hemolymph, just a plasma colored liquid. So, it is hemolymph. Try to note down every point which I am emphasizing on while I am delivering this lecture to you people. So, as I told you the hemocytes are present, but they do not carry any respiratory pigment and hence the blood is colorless which is known as hemolymph and it is, it is colorless and is circulating inside the silomic cavity of the cockroach. Okay. After coming on to this structural portion of the circulatory system then try to memorize this diagram. Try to memorize this diagram. I have zoomed it for you people. The whole silomic cavity is divided into three parts by two diaphragms. The dorsal diaphragm and the ventral diaphragm. See, this is the whole body cavity and these are the diaphragmatic spaces. These are the diaphragmatic projections. So, this one being the ventral diaphragm and the upper one is the dorsal diaphragm over here. You can see the two diaphragms. They are dividing into number 1, number 2 and number 3. Three basic silomic cavity. So, the upper one is known as pericardial sinus. Sinus means blood filled space. Okay. So, the dorsal diaphragm, dorsal to the dorsal diaphragm, this portion will be more dorsal to the dorsal diaphragm. So, this particular cavity, silomic cavity is known as the pericardial sinus. Pericardial sinus, why, how the name came? These are 13 chambered heart of the cockroach. These are the small triangular projections making the 13 chambers in the heart of the cockroach and hence the name of the sinus being pericardial sinus. Okay? Then this is the perivisceral, the second one is the perivisceral sinus. Perivisceral sinus has gonoseal, gonadial cavity in it and the esophagus along with it. The two main structure which is enclosed by this perivisceral sinus are the gonoseal or the gonadial cavity. It is the true body cavity actually, basically concerned with the, it is analogous to human liver. Okay, This gonoseal, this is very important term which I am telling you people. And the third one, the ventral sinus bifurcates the perivisceral sinus into the third sinus space. This is the third sinus space and this is known as perineural. Why is it known as perineural? Because this is the nerve cord. This was the nerve cord and, and this space is enclosing this nerve cord and hence it is perineural sinus. This space was enclosing the heart, hence it got the name pericardial sinus. This space is enclosing the nerve, the nerve cord, so perineural sinus and this the middle space is enclosing the visceral organs and hence it got the name perivisceral sinus. So, this is a broad and the basic idea which you must have when you study about the circulatory system of the cockroach. So, this is the first thing which I wanted to tell you. The second thing you can see in this diagram that dorsal diaphragm and the ventral diaphragm. 
they are having the it, it is not continuous they are having spaces in between see with the arrow it is being shown over here these spaces are known as fenestra or sphincters through which the blood will go into the heart both see on both the sides over here as well see they are fenestra or the sphincters through which blood will pass from the perineural sinus into perivisceral sinus and from perivisceral sinus into the pericardial sinus from pericardial sinus into the last portion of the heart from here the blood will flow from all the chambers and it will go into the head through a anterior aorta so now this is the second thing which can be asked this is the second concept which you must remember the flow chart of the blood how it flows as we study in our body na like blood from the organs is going to the heart from heart it is being pumped out into the lungs from lungs again it is coming into the heart so you study the sequely of or what do you call the propagation of the uh, the circulation of the blood inside our body through which which organs it is passing throughout so similarly as you studied in the respiratory system also of the cockroach similarly we have this thing in the circulatory system as well okay so you have to remember this thing so i have made a chart for that please do remember this diagram see the blood from the heart is reaching to to head through this anterior aorta so which structure is responsible for transferring the blood from thorax portion into the head portion that is anterior aorta okay head sinus so as soon as the blood reaches as soon as the bl blood reaches the head you can see that it has a pulsatile ampulla so the question can be asked what is the function of this pulsatile ampulla which is present on the head of the cockroach and uh, it supplies blood to antenna and wings it supplies blood to antenna and wings so you you must know what is the function of this pulsatile ampulla what was this anterior aorta doing it was connecting the thoraxial perithoraxial circulation with the cephalic circulation so that is anterior aorta over here for you people okay so when you have seen this diagram now now come on to this flow chart and just see have a check from head sinus into the ampulla from now again through the dorsal diaphragm from the perineural sinus to perivisceral sinus perivisceral sinus to pericardial sinus okay so this is ventral basically this is ventral diaphragm and this seems to be the dorsal diaphragm just have a look at it blood from the perineural sinus through the ventral diaphragm see this was ventral diaphragm na is reaching to perivisceral sinus from perivisceral sinus again through dorsal diaphragm it is coming into the pericardial sinus and once it has reached into the pericardial sinus through the 13 chambers of heart see now every heart is containing an ostia just see have a look at it every chamber of the heart is having a small ostia over here just have a look at it these ostial openings so when the heart contracts when the heart contracts the blood is pushed into alary muscles the one end of the alary muscle is attached to the tergum or the tergite this this portion was known as tergum no attachment of the alary muscles can also be asked and how does it help in it so along with the alary muscles and tergosternal muscles both the muscles are helping in circulation actually what happens i tell you when the sternotergal muscles dilate the body these alary muscles expand or dilate the heart chambers because try to remember the attachment of the sternotergal muscle 
it was attached to the tergal portion and the sternal plate na the alary muscles are also attached to the tergal portion na so there is a adjunctive action of both these muscles to increase the thoracic cavity and thereby dilating the tubules of the thereby dilating the chambers of the heart so when they come down so systole happens when again the body thoracic cavity increases along with alary and tergosternal muscles then what happens dilation of these tubules of the heart the chambers of the heart so it is 13 chamber heart which is dorsally situated then we come on to excretory system these are the malphigian tubules see they are demarcated as over here they are present on the iliocecal border at the iliocecal junction in the elementary canal what do these malphigian tubules do just see they are absorbing much amount of water and other nitrogenous waste they are the undigested food is taken up over here and the nitrogenous waste see the dry waste in form of uric acid is eliminated outside the body just have a look at it see the water is taken up by it the potassium is secreted into it the sodium excess amount of sodium which has been intaken and which has not been digested or absorbed by the intestine is also secreted into this cavity and along all the nitrogenous waste along with it is passed out from the hind gut into the rectal portion for the final elimination for the final elimination got to know it now some facts and the organs which are responsible for the excretion of waste this is very important try to remember this potassium urate is the main excretory product this potassium urate is converted into potassium bicarbonate and uric acid and this uric acid is expelled out of the body of the cockroach okay then fat body nephrocyte body wall and uricose gland in males help in excretion so this question can be asked to to you people in the neat examination which of the following is not helping in the excretion so most of the guys confused with the body wall which helps in the excretion actually i have told you that the this uric acid and other hyperuric or allantoic wastes are deposited on the wall of the body and is eliminated at the time of molting so remember this point that body wall also plays a part in the excretion of the nitrogenous waste along with the fat body urate cell it is present in both the sexual variants nephrocyte storage excretion storage excretion actually is reverse assimilation the ammo the ammonial wastes are absorbed and is converted into proteins in the gonocele cavity which was enclosed by the perivisceral sinus so please make a note of it storage excretion this nitrogenous waste is stored inside the body and some part of it is converted into pro proteins by the process of reverse assimilation so this is a storage excretion phenomena which is uh, taken up by the nephrocytes in the cockroach and a body wall i have told you uricose glands only in males actually what happens when you will study about the reproductive system of the cockroach then you have some glands which are known as uh, utricular glands so they have a long and a short tubules so on the tip of the long tubules which are uh, known as utriculus majoris these uricose glands are present i will be dealing in detail with these uricose glands when i will teach you about the reproductive system of the cockroach for time being when we are studying about the excretory system you must know that the uricose gland are only present in males but all the three the body wall the nephrocytes and the fat bodies that's what i am telling you many a times remember this thing okay gono seal the fat bodies so they are present in both the variants these are also known as the urate cells they help in the 
excretion and getting elimination of the nitrogenous waste and the storage of the nitrogenous waste which is known as storage elimination inside the body of the cockroach. So, this excretory system is also very important from the point of then we come on to nervous system. Again many a questions are being on asked on the nervous system as well. The first question is how many pairs of ganglia are present? How many pairs of ganglia are present in the cockroach? The answer is 9, not 10. 10 were spiracles. Now, again, the sixth minor ganglia is present on the seventh segment of the abdomen. Make a note of it. These are small questions which can be asked to you people and you can easily get confused with it. So, what I told you, there are 9 pairs of ganglia which are present in the cockroach. 3 are major which are present in the thorax, they are bigger and larger in size and 6 are minor which are present on the abdominal portion. Each ganglia corresponds to segment of the abdomen. The 6th minor ganglia is present on the 7th segment of the abdomen. Okay. So, you can easily see it in the diagram as well. You can easily see it in the diagram as well the subesophageal ganglion, the thoracic ganglion which I am basically dealing about, the thoracic 1, 2 and 3. They are three major ganglion which are present over here. See, the brain I will be dealing first of all about the thoracic ganglion. Three these were and then 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 and 6. These 6 they are present on the abdomen. So, first thing which you learned over here is this. Now, I come on to brain. See the central nervous system, try to say it central nervous system. So, central nervous system in human is comprised of a brain and a nerve cord. Similarly, in the cockroach also it consists of a brain and a nerve cord. Just see the diagram. The brain is represented by two pair of ganglion which is present either on the dorsal surface of the esophagus or on the ventral surface of the esophagus. Okay. Supraesophageal ganglion and subesophageal ganglion. This is the tube. Either it will be present over the top or it will be present below it either on the dorsal surface of the esophagus, the supraesophageal ganglion or on the ventral surface of the esophagus. So, it will be known as subesophageal ganglion and these two ganglions are connected with each other with the help of a connectives. Okay, not commissures, connectives. Now, if someone has uh, really listened to my lectures on uh, animal kingdom, then you might be able to tell me the difference between the connectives and the commissures. Try to recall it. So, this was about the brain. The brain is represented by two pair of ganglion. I have already mentioned it over here actually. The supraesophageal and the subesophageal ganglion, it has been written over here. So, it was represented by brain. The nerve cord as in us, here also the invertebrates have their nerve cord which is always solid and ventral. As you will study about the evolutionary history, from ventral it went to mid dorsal and then it went to dorsal. Na? So, it is an evolutionary trend of upraising of the nerve cord from ventral to dorsal. So, try to remember at this point also in which phylum did you find mid dorsal nerve cord? Which animal showed this? So, try an easy question which can come in the neat examination for you people on nerve cord. Solid, it is solid, double present on both the lateral sides, left and right. Solid, double present on the ventral side. So, ventral nerve cord. Okay. Solid, ventral, double nerve cord. So, nerve cord, this is what I have paired longitudinal solid nerve cord is located on the ventral side of the body. Longitudinal just because it is parallel to the long axis of the body of the cockroach. So, it is known as longitudinal. Then the peripheral nervous system which I discussed with you people that there are three pair of thoracic ganglion which are larger in size. 
they are formed by the fusion of a single ganglion while the last the sixth one the last ganglion is formed by the fusion of many ganglions together okay so this is about peripheral ganglion then autonomic nervous system the autonomic nervous system then i must tell you about this line see this line sympathetic and parasympathetic supply involuntary actions are usually being controlled there is a gland present over here corpora cardiaca it releases a juvenile hormone it releases a juvenile hormone and is under the control of sympathetic nervous system now again this is a question in the neat examination so i am just enumerating to you every single question which has been either asked or can be asked in the neat examination this is a detailed case study of cockroach anything can be asked to you people so you need to be prudent enough to interpret and articulate the various physiological phenomena various physiological phenomena which are happening inside this cockroach so if you don't remember these things try to simulate it with human beings and that's what i have done with you people try to simulate these things if you really want to memorize them with humans as we have brain we have spinal cord so it has a double ventral nerve cord and uh, supra and subesophageal ganglions similarly in the circulatory system and the respiratory system or the excretory system like the upper portion of the mesenteron was basically concerned with the absorption of most of the food isn't it similarly in our intestine also the absorption is going to take place over here most of the water is absorbed in the cecal portion or the colon portion of the in the human body similarly in the cockroaches the amount of water is absorbed by the rectal papilla muscles there are rectal papilla a ribbon like projections at rectum position which absorb most of the amount of water leaving only only the crystalline uric acid as the excretory waste reverse assimilation storage elimination uricose gland the presence of it in the six selective cases the gonoseal like in nervous system you have studied about the various receptors i omitidia you have studied about the antenna you have studied about the anal sulci isn't it about the palps which are present on side the body isn't it there are some sensilla cells sensilla these are neurosensory cells which are present on the dermis portion of the cockroach cockroach usually lacks ep epidermis it doesn't it, it just has a cuticular layer and a hypodermis if you go into the graduation studies you will see to it if you cut a longitudinal section you will have to know that there are special type of neurosensory cells which are known as sensilla which are present in the hypodermal portion they have a ct a palpial projections over their body so there are many a things so what you have to do ki you people have to articulate this all facts together and study it as you are studying humans this is the only way you are going to remember and articulate not just remembering i always say it's not about remembers it's not about retentivity it's about the connectivity which i always emphasize on okay so in my next lecture i am going to discuss you about the reproductive system again a very important uh, topic from the point of view of cockroach and in neat so try to read to my lectures and make note of it always have a pen and a paper while you listen to my videos so we come on to the reproductive system of roaches the roaches reproduce on an average of 100 days which may vary from 45 to 215 days okay so when we talk about roaches in pertaining to neat examination in which you people are going to appear 
this lecture would be important for you people. Definitely a question comes from the reproductive system of the roach. So in this chapter what you people have to do, you people have to remember the name of the glands, their location and their function in a chronological order. I would try to teach you people in a chronological order which is well articulated and the function of each gland described at that particular point of time itself. Okay. So, without wasting amount of time for you people, I start with the male reproductive system of the roach. So, this is a structure of a male reproductive system. In this system, what you find the main, the primary sperm producing organ is testes. See, 